Before we discuss the principles of soil health, it's worthwhile talking about the nature and property of soils. Because if we don't understand the nature and property of soils, at least the basics, it's going to be difficult to provide a context for soil health itself. So just bear with me as I highlight some of these ideas about soils that I think are really important. The first idea that I'd like to highlight is that soils vary a lot. They vary in things like texture, soil structure and also color. Just go and take a look at a road cut and you'll see what I mean. Soils can be classified into something like 19,000 different soil series across our country alone. So that gives you some sort of an idea. The second idea that I'd like to highlight is that soils are three-dimensional bodies. They go down typically down to about six foot or 72 inches. This is important especially in the light of the fact that we take our soil samples down to the six inch flower pan. This is a traditional way of measuring soils, but often when we get our soil tests back, we're apt to think that that is all there is to soil. I want to tell you that below six inches is a reservoir of moisture and nutrients that you want to tap into, and there are ways that you can do that. One of the most mind-blowing things that I learned is that a good soil might contain a ton to two tons or even more of soil microbes. Uh, that's, you know, the equivalent of one or two cow-calf pairs, and that is a lot of microbes. Now, these microbes might be uh, bacteria, fungi, protozoans, nematodes, and then the other part of soil life are the little uh, uh, macro invertebrates like uh, macro arthropods and, and earthworms, and these all make, part, make up soil life. We're apt also to think that microbes are bad, but the reality is the majority of microbes are good, and the farmer and gardener need to look at these microbes as allies and not enemies. Now, one of the things that we've got to learn how to do is how do we keep these microbes fed? When we feed these microbes, they serve us. Dr. Chris Nichols states that about 90% of soil function is attributable to soil microbes. Now, what does that mean? Soil functions that farmers care about are water going into the ground and recycling nutrients and making them available to the plants and also keeping plants healthy. The fourth really important idea that I'd like to highlight is the composition of soils. We know that soils are made up of minerals, namely sand, silt, and clay particles. Soils are also made up of organic matter, but that's only half the story. The remainder of the soils is actually made up of something we call void space. Void space can either be filled by gas, namely air and carbon dioxide, or by water. This void space is really where the microbes live. When we take away pore space through tillage and through compaction, we're really removing the habitat in which microbes live. So part of our job as farmers and gardeners is actually to look after that poor space. The final idea that I'd like to highlight is that soils change. We're often apt to think that soils only change over geological time. But if you listen to what Dr. Sky Will says is that there are many soil properties like infiltration, like organic matter, that change in much shorter periods of time, certainly in our lifetime. But we've seen some of these properties like organic matter change in literally a, manner, a matter of a few years. So in this sense, we can consider soils not as just a medium to grow plants, but as a living, dynamic, mutualistic ecosystem. And as farmers and gardeners, we want to know how to look after that ecosystem. Now that we have this basis of understanding, let's move on to the principles of soil health. Bàn tay Việt, công nghệ Việt.